It seems to me that there are three basic principles that all Hinduism uh, in various ways embraces. First is the principle of caste. First is the principle of caste. That all of society is organized in caste systems. Now, there's many modern Hindus who attempt to depart from the caste system. And they will say, caste does not form me. I am freed from caste. With modern mobility and secularization, caste has less hold on a lot of Hindus than it did, say, a century ago. That is very true. However, even though a Hindu may be escaping from the uh, definitions that caste would put upon his life. Nevertheless, in various ways, he is influenced by caste because the whole society is influenced very powerfully by the caste system. We'll talk more about caste later on. But just to say, a foundational observation is that all Hindus, in various ways, maybe it is little, maybe it is much, are influenced by caste. I was traveling with some Hindus in a limousine from my home in Lancaster, Pennsylvania to New York City to catch an airplane one day. It's a three-hour drive. And this Hindu family were in the car, and I was sharing with them about the book that I've written on world religions and the chapter on Hinduism and the challenge I got from uh, the professor in Nepal about the book. Well, they said, uh, when you say that all Hindus are, are influenced by caste, that's not true of us. We're free from caste. We're modern, secular Hindus who live in the United States. A caste has nothing to say to us. We are free from it completely. So I asked them, what if your daughter would want to marry uh, would want to marry someone who is not a Hindu? How would you feel about it? Oh, no, 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 we would object to that. We would object to that. No, no, our daughter would need to marry within our social system. So just that question, they were more influenced by caste than what they thought they were. I think, I think, I think so, yeah. The third, the third principle, which in various ways forms all Hindus, is the principle of karma. karma. This is the principle that your actions determine your fate. The best example I can think of would be a tennis racket and a tennis ball. The tennis racket that hits the ball is your, is your action. That action hits the ball. The ball is your soul. When you hit the tennis ball, action, hitting soul, that ball goes in the direction that is determined by what your racket did to the ball. Once the ball has been hit, there is no way to intervene and send the ball in a different direction. Once your action has hit that ball, its destiny is determined. There can be no deviation, no change from that destiny. That's the nature of karma. Karma is the action, and your soul is like the tennis ball. Your action determines your state now and in the future. So karma is the second principle that influences all Hindu thinking. The third principle is Brahman. Brahman. The belief that all, that, 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 that world soul is the universal reality. Um, all is Brahman. 
some years ago, I went to a uh, Hindu ashram in Nairobi, Kenya. And I, I mentioned this the other day, I, as one of many visits I would make to these sorts of centers, uh, I was taking a university class to, to visit with this, uh, in this uh, Hindu, Hindu ashram. And uh, the, uh, the priest, whose job it was to take care of all of the many, many gods in this Hindu temple, uh, he was explaining this concept that all is Brahman, all is world soul. And then, in a rather excited way, he started to say, in other words, this, he didn't speak very good English or very good Swahili, so he went like this, this God, this God, this God, he meant to say this is God, this God, this God, this God, this God, everything, God, 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 God. The action is Brahman, non-action is Brahman, uh, to eat is Brahman, this desk is Brahman, the air is Brahman, what we see is Brahman, what we don't see is Brahman, all is Brahman, 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 you see. All is God, God, God is what this uh, Hindu Swami was explaining to us. Everything is universally Brahman. Which of course means there's no way to speak about truth or falsehood because Brahman is everything. Brahman is truth and Brahman is falsehood. Everything is Brahman. TBS Seminary is a nonprofit project. Our joint effort will bring about the common purpose of making Christian education available around the world and developing good Christian servant leaders. You have a unique opportunity to partner in this effort through your prayer and or financial support of TBS Ministry. For more information, please visit tbsseminary.com. Those three principles. Um, if a Hindu were here with us today and we would ask, what is the essence of Hinduism? I think he would agree. I think he would say, yes, it is the conviction that all is Brahman. It is the law of karma. And at least being influenced by caste, even though you may be attempting to break free from it in the modern world in which we live. The caste influences our thinking, our social relationships, and we believe that all is karma, uh, th we believe that karma determines your destiny, and we believe that all is Brahman, those three basic principles of Hinduism. And so we will be visiting those principles uh, for the next several sessions as we look at Hinduism in our modern world.